Okay guys, so um, using this um, map that we created in previous videos, I'm going to create like an enemy character that's going to be kind of chasing me around the map um, to a restricted area that you can change. Um, and it's going to have animations as well, so that when it starts chasing us, it will play like a running animation. When it's not chasing us, it will play an idle animation. It will automatically switch between those. Um, so we're going to learn lots about how we can implement animations to um, characters and things, which can be used for a, a whole bunch of other stuff. So hopefully it will be useful. Uh, in terms of the animations, we're going to be using, if I switch over to my browser, we're going to be using Mixamo. Um, you know, if you're just starting out, uh, creating your own animations is going to be, you know, really challenging unless you already know how to do that. So we're going to kind of take some um, really well made existing ones from Adobe and uh, from Mixamo. They do also have these characters as well. Um, so this is kind of a, a zombie style uh, game I'm creating here, isn't it? Where, you know, the zombie will chase us around. So I found this guy here that we're going to use. Very nice. Oh, there's a hundred, one or hundreds, but there's a whole bunch you can um, look through on their character list, which are freely available to use. And once you've got your character, we can switch over to animations here. <clears throat> so I need two animations. I need a, an idle animation and kind of a running animation. Keeping it simple with these two animations, you can have more than that. You could have like a, you know, like a walking, you know, and running, um, whatever, you can have jumping and all that kind of business. But this enemy character, all it, I need it to do is run after us. Yeah, I don't need it to jump and all this kind of business. So um, if I just search for something quite specific, zombie idol. Um, you can see there's a bunch of animations here, so I can click uh, like this one. And here we go. It shows previews the animation on this character, um, which is fine. Okay, and I can go to zombie run as well. And then you know there's a running animation there, um, which I can use as well. But go to idle first of all. And you know, you can look through these and uh, have a play around with these yourself, but I'm just going to pick some quickly. So this zombie idle will be fine. What I'm going to do is I'm going to now download this. So if I hit download, um, don't change the format. That's fine. Don't change the FPS. Don't think that upping it to 60 is going to be, you know, the, the must do thing. 30 is fine. Skin. Now, this is um because I'm downloading this character for the first time, I want the character to come with it. So I'm going to say with skin. If you're just uh, downloading animation and you're going to plug it into something else you already had, which we'll do in a bit, you do without. But this is the first time and I want the character to come too. So I'm going to say with skin. I don't need any keyframe reductions. Um, and yeah, I'm going to hit download. Okay, and that will download as you can see. So that's the idle. Now, one thing to remember is the first one I downloaded with the character with it is the idle one. So just bear that in mind. Now, zombie run. So this one will do. Now, first of all, running. Um, notice how the character is actually moving across the floor and then reverting back again. I don't want that to actually happen because if um, I program this into my game, which was going to make the character follow me, it's going to try to do the movement of this character as well as the movement of him moving towards me. And it's going to start jumping all over the place like it is on the screen now in game, which you don't want. So you need to turn this one on called in place. Um, and obviously the movement or the velocity of him moving across the map in game will add the movement and it will, you know, combined with that running motion will look like he's running. Um, by the way, you know, there's other sort of things you can tweak with these animations if you want to look at those as well. Um, but for me, I don't want to, so I'm also going to hit download again. This time, I already downloaded the character, remember? So I'm going to ha have without skin this time. I don't need to download the character twice. Just the animation I need this time. And I'm going to hit download again. Okay, and see that downloaded a lot quicker. All right. So that's fine. That's all I really need Mixamo for. Um, so I can close Mixamo down, come back to my game. Um, 
by the way, I have this folder here. Um, for, I obviously did this before I started recording just to make sure I knew how to do this. So I've got a working one there called zombie, but I'm going to create another folder. Um, and this time I'll call it zombie two. Okay. Right. And in here, I need to create a new blueprint class for my enemy. And it's going to be a character blueprint. And I'm going to call it zombie two. You can call yours whatever you like. I'm going to open this up. All right. Okay. So because it's a character blueprint, it's got like this character movement thing in here and some other bits and pieces already in the components there. All right. But it doesn't have a mesh, you know, my character isn't here. So I need to add a component and, um, there's two different types of meshes, a skeletal one and a static mesh. If you've got an, a character, um, you know, a main character, enemy character, or, or anything really that has some kind of animation in it, it needs to be a skeletal mesh. Um, things that are just for the environment uh, and things like that, the static mesh is fine, but skeletal is what we're going to need to use. Okay. And then on the right hand side, we can plug in here the skeletal mesh we want. Um, now, I haven't imported my enemy in yet, so I'll just do that first. That was probably something I should have done. So in the same folder, I'm going to add import. Import to the game. Um, and you can see here the things I've downloaded. Um, so what was it called? It was called Zombie Idol, wasn't it, the one I did? Okay, so Zombie Idol, I'm going to open that. It'll have all this stuff. Don't worry too much about that. Because the first one you import, don't worry about changing anything there. Just import all. Okay. Nine times out of ten, you always get some kind of error message. Let's get rid of that. Right. So we can see there's a whole bunch of stuff has been imported in. Uh, it imported the character as well. Remember, so the character textures are here. Um, the animation is there. That green line means it's an animation. Um, and we've got the physics asset, we've got the skeleton, uh, and that is the mesh there, the skeletal mesh. You can see it says zombie idle skeletal mesh. So that's all just coming automatically. That's exactly what we need. So let's go back to our blueprint again. And back to here, the skeletal mesh. And now you can see zombie idle. There it is. Okay, so there's my enemy. I can lower him back down. Him. He needs to face the same way as the arrow, that blue arrow, I mean, um, and that's fine. Okay, so we've got an enemy in here. I'm not going to worry too much about animations for now. The first thing I want to get done is that I just want to make this guy, you know, chase me, you know, follow me around the map, I should say, without the animations, first of all. So in order to do that, I'm going to come over to the event graph here. Um, in fact, wait, just before I do that, there's one thing I need to add. So I'm going to add a component um, and it's going to be called pawn sensing. OK, so pawn sensing. This is something that we can use um, so that the this enemy character will actually, um, you know, be able to see or hear the actual character itself. So we need to do that. I uh, don't need to change anything here. No. Over to the event graph so we can tell it how to work. So I'm going to click Pawn Sensing. Actually, first we'll get rid of these out of the way. I like to delete those because they're kind of distracting unless you're going to use them. And I'm going to right click. So click Pawn Sensing, right click, add an event for Pawn Sensing, Event Dispatcher. And you can see I've got a couple of options. One is if it's going to you know, start doing something if it hears a noise. And one is it's going to start doing something if it sees uh, another pawn, which my character is. So that's the one I want it's when it sees me. Um, and what do I want it to do? I want it to move to me so I can go AI move to. The one I want there. Um, So there we move. Uh, 
sorry about that, I had a little bit of a mind blank, it's because I didn't do the casting. So from here, um, <coughs> cast to first person character, okay, because this is the, the pawn that we want this guy to look at. So when it sees this person, which is our first person character, so it goes up. Um, what do we want it to do? Uh, that's going to be the target. Yeah. And then what is actually going to move? Well, itself is going to move. So I just need a reference to itself. Okay, and that is it. So hit compile. So quite a simple little blueprint here. So when we this zombie we've created sees the first person character, it is going to move towards it. What's going to move itself? What's it going to move to the first person character? Okay, so compile that and that's fine. Great, so if we now place this zombie into the world, there he is. We've got all these lines and things coming off of him, which I'll explain in a second, but we've got him positioned here. Let's rotate him. That'll do. Standing there, kind of waiting. Right, great. But you know, if we play, nothing will happen yet. I can walk over here and see him. And all he'll do is stand there, T posing. Okay, that's fine. Um, so if I just come back into the blueprint again, um, click on my character, and we click this pawn sensing, we'll see what all these lines are here. So see all these lines. Um, so if we go to, um, well, we've got the site radius. So if we change that down, see the green line. The green line is for site. Uh, we can change the um, the distance of how far this guy can see. I want him to see quite far, so to be honest, we'll leave it at the default. Um, and we can also have the site uh, as like a you know like more of a, a cone. At the moment, it's like a 360. You can see from all angles. Um, peripheral vision, that's the one. So if I turn that down, you can see you can be a bit more focused, um, which for a, a sort of humanoid character, that might be a bit more normal. Um, so maybe if we have it something like 30. Um, there, so we can see, you know, when he's going to start seeing us, maybe a bit more, maybe like 45. Okay, great. Okay. Now it's still not going to change anything. Um, you can see his cone of view there. So if I walk into that cone of view, it's still not going to start moving towards me. Last thing I need to add to make this work is this pathfinding, essentially, that's called uh, onto my map. So this character knows how to move around and what space it can move in. So I'm going to go over here. I'm going to go nav mesh bounds, nav mesh bounds volume. I drag one of those in. You see it's just this um, orange cube. It's going to lower it down so that it intersects with the ground. And this essentially is the area that this enemy can move in. So I'm going to scale that to something like, should we say that? There you go. So that is the area in which my enemy can move around in. Okay. Uh, a little tip, if you push P on the keyboard, you will toggle on and off the actual, the, you know, it shows green the actual area in which this character can move. Okay, push P again to turn that off. All right, let's push play again. So at the moment I'm outside of that area. If I come over here and move into that area, it's seen me, there you go, and it's chasing after me. Okay, if I go outside of its kind of vision, like if I'm stood behind it, it can't see me. If I move in front of it and see it can, and it goes after me. Okay, because that kind of works. Obviously, the animations aren't working. Uh, we haven't done that bit yet, but it is chasing after me. One more thing I want to do before we do the animations is just to change its speed, because at the moment, it's moving at exactly the same speed as my character is, and that doesn't really add up. Um, so I'm going to go to back into the blueprint. I'm going to go to this one this time, character movement. And there's really only one thing you need to look at, and it's the max walk speed, 600, which um, if you've not changed this for your, your main character, 
that will be 600 as well, the default for the main character. So um, for my main character moves at 600, let's say I want it to move about half the speed of my main character. So I can change that to 300, compile it, <clears throat> push play, <clears throat> and you'll see that, <coughs> excuse me, um, he now moves at half speed. I'm losing my voice, so now's a good time to finish. Okay, so in the next video, next part, <clears throat> we'll add the animations. <laughs> <clears throat> See you then.